Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So today I thought we'd have a go at doing some little toadstools like this and I'm going to call these fantasy fairy toadstools purely because obviously you can do them in more naturalistic colours but you can make them as bright as you want. These came about as a result of me um, doing a fairy house a couple of weeks ago when I wanted some little mushrooms or little toadstools to put in the garden and I looked online and I found some Mycena um, toadstools which looked quite cute because they had this lovely blend up the um, stem of the toadstool which I thought looked very much like a Skinner blend and then again a lovely little blend going down the cap of the toadstool. So that's why I decided on this blend, not quite in keeping with how they are in real life but I just like the look of them and they're very very simple to make so I thought we'd have fun and have a go with those. One thing I should mention at this point the stem of the toadstools is a Skinner blend in polymer clay but the top we're actually going to paint. That's one of the great things about polymer clay is you don't just have to cane with it, you can do all sorts of other surface effects. So for a change rather than doing cane work in the top I thought we'd have a go at painting and for those of you who like going I can't paint, this isn't any good for me, honestly trust me this one you can do. If you can do that motion with your hand and if you can do that sort of motion, you can paint these toadstools because that's all we need to do for those. So the first thing we need to do is condition our clay. I wasn't going to take you through the conditioning clay today. If you don't know how to condition clay, I do have a video on how to do that and I'll put the links in the description below this video. So get your clay nicely conditioned and then roll it up into a stub-ended sausage. So when you've conditioned your translucent clay, you want to mark a bit about a third of the way up and that'll be for the um, stems of your toadstools and that'll be for the caps of the toadstools and we also just need to take a little bit off there just for later on and that comes say really later on in the process. And then this one I'm just going to roll slightly longer simply because it's easier to chop slices off it. Now if you roll unevenly that is absolutely perfect for this because what we want is eight or nine uneven slices. So if you sort of do this and you find your rolls gone in like that and gone in like that, that'll be absolutely fine because you'll just take slices off and they will automatically be uneven. You can also then just make sure when you're taking the slices to give yourself uneven proportions when you're taking them off. Okay, and then just chop those down. I've actually gone for 10 there. And that's all we're looking for, lots of uneven slices of clay. And all we're then going to do is we are going to push them down together with our fingers, make sure they're all nicely conditioned and roll them into a ball. Put it back into a ball until you've got a nice even round. Then just take it and push it down onto your work surface to create a slight cone shape. And once you've got the cone, this is where you can um, decide what you want to do. And I'll show you both ways. If you have a ball tool, you can use it. If you don't, what you're going to do is you're going to push your fingers into the middle, just creating more of a splay and more of a sort of a cone shape. And you just keep your finger in till you get a nice little shape there. If you've got a ball tool, then it's slightly easier. So let me do one with a ball tool as well. So again, roll it into a ball. Make it into a cone shape. And then take your ball tool, place it in the middle. And you can push down around the side. And obviously, depending how big your mushroom or toast or cap is, you can change the size of your ball tool. You do need to make sure that they don't get stuck. So sometimes it's a bit of a holding onto them and pressing around to release them but either way works well and gives you a nice shape to your toadstools and what we now need to do is get those ready to cook so I'll do I'll get all the rest of these done into the shape and I'll bring you back when I've done done that okay so there I have all my 10 caps done they've all been done um, to give it all different sizes and shapes and don't worry whether they're um, slightly irregular on the bottom that's what we need and we're going to be um, emphasizing that in just a second as well 
but having a nice variety just makes things look, look more naturalistic. So the next thing we need to do is to put some gills in our toasters so that when you look on the inside you see that nice um, pattern. And we're going to do this by using the blunt end of a craft knife. And taking your first one, from the middle working outwards, I just want you to take your craft knife and just draw a slight line. Nothing too deep, you don't want to go, you don't want to cut all the way through. But enough so that when you're dropping some paint in, that's actually going to really sit in the grooves. So all that's all I'm doing, working from the middle outwards. I'm not being neat. And you'll notice as well, if you can see, that where it hits the edge, it's making the edge ragged. And that's perfect, that's actually what we want. We want that nice raggedy edge in our toadstools. So what I'm doing is I'm turning the cap, keeping my hand with the craft knife virtually in place and turning the cap round. It tends to splay the cap slightly more as you do this, which is great. And if I just hold that up for you to see, so hopefully you can see there all those nice incised lines. So it doesn't have to be neat. Um, all we're going is for a little bit of detail. If I show you in the finished one here, so this is one of the blue ones. So hopefully you can see there, when we add some paint into it, you can just see the slight effect of the gills on the inside of the toadstool. So the last thing we need to do for each one before we then get it ready to cook is with that beading needle, we're just going to put a hole right in the centre. This is so that the stem of our toadstool can sit in there. And you'll notice I wiggled it around slightly and that's so that that head pin will actually sit in place. I haven't gone all the way through, made sure I didn't go all the way through. Now, if you don't have one of these beading needles, simply take one of the um, head pins you're use, planning on using and make the hole with that instead. Obviously it hasn't got a pointy side so it's easier to do with a beading needle but it works just as well. And then I'm going to do that with all of my pieces and then I will just lay them either flat or like that on a tile covered in foil. Um, I always do that, it's best practice whenever I'm cooking polymer clay, tent the whole tile in piece of foil so that if your oven spikes for any reason it protects both the clay and your oven. And then I will get all those 10 done and bring you back just before I get those and put them in the oven. So there we are, all 10 of my pieces done with all the gills marked out inside and a nice hole in the middle ready to fit that head pin later. If you bake them on the side, quite often they will actually um, flop slightly to make so it will give you a shape like that which can look very very nice. So if you definitely want them to stay um, bell shaped, sit them on their end like that. I tend to do a variety because I quite like the fact that some of them sort of move and obviously you could use a bit of foil to support them um, to keep them in shape whilst you're cooking them. And as I said, I always tent mine in foil um, just in case the oven spikes during cooking. So cook those um, as per your manufacturer's instructions and whilst those are cooking we will, we will work on the stems. Because I'm doing two colour combinations I'm going to split the bit that I had left and put one either side with my colours and I'm just going to go and get these four colours conditioned and I'll bring you back when that's all done. Okay, so there are our colours conditioned and we're going to do a very quick and easy sneaky little Skinner blend for this. Um, I wasn't planning on taking you all the way through because I've been doing Skinner blends throughout most of my videos. If you don't know how to do a Skinner blend I do have a video particularly on the Skinner blends so I'll put the link to that underneath and also if you look at the recent leaf cane um, video I did I did a very thin narrow Skinner blend on that one and that's what we're going to do today as well. And we're going to do this in a slightly different way because we're going to make it very very easy for us. All we're going to do is we're going to take our translucent clay and push down on one end and pull one end out so it's nice and long and thin. And I think we'll do it, yeah, we'll do it so that the pink's at the bottom. So I'm doing the same thing with the pink, spreading that out so it's nice and thin. And then the blue will sort of flatten and put in the middle. So we're going to end up with a blend like that. So it's going to start with the pink, so it's very much um, a version of the Skinner blend but just done in a very quick and easy way. So start with pink at that end and then it's going to add, get more to the blue where it adds in 
and then the blue is going to go into the translucent and I quite like it where you have a fair bit of translucent at the end if I show you um, one of the finished ones again you really want enough translucent so it's going to show under the cap of the toadstool um, so that's why I like to have quite a bit of nice translucent showing and just to show you exactly the same on this one so same as we just did take your translucent clay press down one end so that it's thin black's going to be at the bottom well I should mention as well here um, these are a mixture of Fimo and Primo clays the Primo is translucent I've also got Primo yellow and Primo blue and then this is Fimo and this is Fimo both Fimo soft so as long as your clays cook at the same temperature you can mix them between um, brands so that one goes down there and then the yellow is going to go in the middle we're not going to see very much of the yellow here at all because the black is such a strong color in the Fimo we're just going to get a little bit of the yellow where it comes into the translucent at this end and then I'm going to I'll start with this one because it's the um, the lighter of the two mixes and I'm pushing it down because what I actually want I'm going to take one of these beading needles we want this Skinner blend to fit around our beading needle but we want a bit of showing both the top and the bottom of the needle so I'm going to push this even thinner so there's no finesse here don't worry about how it looks because we're doing a Skinner blend it's all going to come out in the wash but I actually want that there you go to be um, such a width that I've got metal showing both ends of my head pin there so now I've got that the right width I've still got the blend there as you can see down the cross section so I'm going to pinch one end and I'm going to put it through on my pasta machine and I'm going to put it through on setting number two it goes that way down into the pasta machine and I'm going to butt it tight up against the edge of the pasta machine and then each time I do it I'm folding top to bottom top to bottom um, and then we'll end up with a nice smooth blend so I'll bring you back when I've done that one Every so often I'll check it because there is a tendency, as this one has done, to get wider. So I'll just push that back in and then just push it smaller with your fingers till it goes back to the right size again and then just keep doing that. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that because I know I can actually push it slightly thinner um, when I do my stems. And it's still on setting number two at the moment, so I'm just going to put it on setting number three. There we go, and I did actually push it slightly thinner. So there is that one done, ready to go, with a nice blend from the pink through to the purple through to the blue. So I'll just get this one done as well, and then I'll bring you back when I've got both of those finished. Okay, so we're at the stage now where I've done the blends. So that's the black and yellow one, and this is the, um, the pink, blue, and through to the translucent one. And we're at the stage now where we can start to wrap these round our head bins to give us the um, stems for our toadstools. Now, ideally, we want head pins that are nice and straight. However, quite often when they arrive, quite bent with a terrible kink in them. So this is where your pliers come in. If you take your pliers, hold the um, head pin securely with the head up against the, this is flat nosed um, pliers, and then just pull them with your fingers, nice and firm, and just pulling with your fingers will actually straighten out your head pin for you. So I need five of each colour. So I'm going to do that, so get them all nice and straight, and then we'll come back when that's done. So I'm going to use the, um, the Skinner Blend with the pink, the blue, and the translucent, and I've put it onto my measuring sheet, because you don't need very much at all, really, um, when you're going around and cutting round the clay for to make the stems for the toadstools. It's one of these things that practice makes perfect. So the first couple of times you do it, you might be a bit ham-fisted. So if you want, cut yourselves a couple of larger slices to start with, practice on those, and then go on to thinner ones. Because one of the whole points about the look of these toadstools is that the stems are nice and thin. It gives them quite a delicate, and say using the term fantasy fairy toadstools, it does give them a nice delicate look um, with the stems being so thin. So to do that, we don't need very much clay at all. So this is setting number three on the pasta machine. So I'm just going to give myself a straight edge, although to be honest, you can use that bit as well if you're short. And actually this is marked in quarter inches. I'm actually going to do just over, or effectively one and a half of those quarter inches. And I'm just going to give myself five pieces. One, two, three, four, five pieces. Obviously you'll do, if you're doing more than that you can do add extra in. And then I'm going to take some of the poly paste and they say if you haven't got this then some of the tacky glue will do. I'm just taking the merest little bit on my finger so not very much at all 
and I'm just going to put a tiny scrape on this. We don't want a lot because you don't want so much that it's going to make, particularly if you're using PVA glue um, and also um, if you're using the ordinary liquid clays in this, which you could use an alternative for this stage. Just a merest, merest amount, just to make them slightly, slightly tacky, no more than that. And then I'm just going to separate them out, keeping them top uppermost, so I know which way I'm going, and having a wet wipe to hand, so you will need a wet wipe to hand for this. So take your first piece, lay it flat down, whichever way you're working. Take your head pin and the head wants to go at the translucent end. And then just press that very gently down into the clay. Then what you want to do, holding on to it, just with my fingernail almost, or the very edge of my finger, can you see I've just tipped that edge up and over the head pin and then you should be able to roll and there you've got your head been covered but we're going to finesse it slightly where the join is just take your stub ended knitting needle and just roll across the join just to smooth it and then we're going to put it back down on to our measuring sheet and just give it a bit of a roll have a look see, see if you can see where the join is. I've still got a little groove there so I'll do it again because what I'm looking for is completely seamless stem. Have a look, check that you're happy with it, give it another little roll if necessary and take your time because you've still got time whilst the others are cooking so you've got time to do this and what I'm looking for, I'm looking for just a little bit of that end proud with the head pin sticking out there and a little bit proud here because I'm going to use these um, in fairy houses so I'm going to use them in the garden so I want a little bit of this um, hanging free so that I've got something to stick it into to give it some support. If you weren't planning on doing that or wanted them as something else but still wanted the security of having the metal in here this is the point at which you take your pliers and obviously snip the end of the metal off. I will also at this stage just with my thumbnail just press the end flat. I'm sticking mine flat into other clay. I want it to have a nice finish on it. And because these are head pins, the other thing you can do at this stage is very, very gently just curl the whole thing around your finger. You can curl it that way. You can do a little S blend, and that will give you a nice little um, shape to the stem of your toadstool. And then just repeat that for as many as you need. thing is if you want one shorter is just to push the clay up so I'm holding on to this end with the head pins make sure that doesn't go off the end and with my fingers I am just literally pushing the clay up makes it a little bit more stubby um, but that's fine because it's obviously it's a toaster that's still growing into its shape and then again just curl it around okay so there are my ten stems done five in one colour, five in the other. And just as before, I'll wrap the whole thing in tin foil and put it in the oven and bake as per the manufacturer's instructions. And hopefully, like me, whilst we are making the stems, our caps, toaster caps, are now all finished and ready for their first little bit of painting. Now all we're going to do to start with is just put some paint on the inside to really highlight these gills and we do this before putting the two bits of the toadstool together simply because it's very difficult to get a paintbrush in um, to the rest of it once the stem's on. It's very easy once it's on to hold on to the stem and then be able to paint the um, cap of the toadstool. And I'm going to use these two bits of Skinner Blend that I've got left over from doing the stems as a guide and I tend to go very dark so for this one I will actually do black on the inside of five of those and on these ones I will go for this very bright pink. We should turn that that way up. Got both dark colours at the bottom. And then we'll start painting the inside of five of those. The other thing I need to do is to separate these out because I want to have sort of a medium amount. There we go, do it that way. So I've got a mixture in both sets of large, medium and small. So let's get some paint and have some fun and go painting. 
For doing these, I'm going to use my nice big brush because we're going to do effectively a wash and make a very, very um, wet, almost ink-like consistency. So black for this one, pink for this one. And you definitely need wet wipes on hand for this. And the reason we made the gills the way we did and made them also nice and rough is it gives it more chance for the um, acrylic paint to sit in. So let's start with the pink ones. So I have my wet wipe to hand. I've got my mushroom and I'm literally just shoving the paint in. If you notice, I'm just doing very simple strokes from the middle out and pulling it away. And you want to do it fairly quickly if you can. And the second you've finished, get your wet wipe in there and it should take out most of the paint and just leave the paint sitting in the grooves. And that's all we want, just something to um, highlight those indication of the gills that we put in. If you're not happy and want to go back and do it again, do. If it's not, paint isn't quite thick enough, um, you can always add a bit more colour in. So I'll just get these done and then bring you back. So the pink one's done, just clean my paintbrush and then do exactly the same for the black. Okay, when they're done, clean your brush, clean your hands. And probably like me, you need to wait for your toadstool stems to finish baking. So once those are baked, and they're out of the oven and they're cooled, we'll come back and we'll finish putting them together. So for the final part um, of the cooking and the third part of the baking, we are going to attach the stems to the caps. And we're going to use that using some of the poly paste and using either the blunt ended knitting needle or a cocktail stick. And remember that little piece of um, spare translucent clay we put to one side, we're going to use that as well. So the first thing we're going to do is do something with this. I'm going to roll this into a very, very thin sausage or snake, depending on what you normally call them. Now we don't need very much at all, just a thin bit. This is going to help hold those stems in to the caps and then I'm just going to start taking off little slices, probably about a couple of centimetres each. There we go. One, two, three, four, five for that side. One, two, three, four, five for that side. So I'll start with the um, pink ones here. And what I tend to do, and this is a, a tip for you, I tend to put the caps in order of size. and then put my, my stems in order of size as well. Otherwise, I will sometimes end up with the um, smallest cap on the one of the larger stems. So I just put in that sort of line, probably put that one that way, that one that way. And then when I'm happy roughly how they're going to be, I will take the tip of my stem and stick it into some of the poly paste, give myself a nice gloop on the top, and then I'm going to push it into that hole But it has gone in because of that um, holding nice and steady. And this is why I like the Kato Poly Paste, because it does hold them steady. However, we want it slightly more um, security than that, particularly if we're going to have these standing up three-dimensionally. You take this little bit of translucent clay that we've got, and we're going to push it down into the inside and round the edge of our cap and where the stem meets it like that. And then to give it a bit of texture and to make it look as though it's part of the plant, if we just take our um, blunt end of our knitting needle, or if you've got it a cocktail stick, stick, and we're just going to press down, making little sort of um, indents where that clay is holding the stem in place. And that is all you need to do and that will then hold that securely in place for you once it's baked and then we're just going to do that with all rest of the the four of the pink and blue ones and the other five of the black and gold ones 
and then when they're all done we will put them back in and they will be ready to um, bake and I will bring you back when that is done. If for some reason um, when you put your piece up it doesn't want to stick let's just do it with this one so let's pretend that one doesn't want to stick properly and it keeps coming out and falls out all you need to do is to take your little piece of translucent clay make it a little round donut shape pop that into the middle and then press that down into the middle of it and then repeat as before making a little texture with the um, end of your knitting needle and that will hold it in shape so if you have any problems at all just make that little donut instead right so there are all the um, toast stools finished and all I've done is I put some crumpled foil um, on a tile and I just let them fall in a way that supports both the cap and the stem so they're all ready to go and as per usual I will just cover the whole thing in foil and cook as per the manufacturer's cooking instructions and I will bring you back when they're done for the last part which is the fun part which is just finishing the painting and then they'll be ready to go so here we have our finished toadstools out of the oven all done so I'm going to work on decorating these ones first so I'll put these ones to one side so I have got there was the um, runny ink like pink that we did the inside with before we cooked them and I've got myself out some more pink and some blue because those are the two colours I've got in the stems of the toadstools and quite a lot of white now the first thing we're going to do is we are going to with a small brush fill in the colour and put some colour onto those little extra bits of translucent we put to make sure that the stems were nicely placed now if by any chance you don't have a small brush and obviously that one is very small then what you can do you can take one of these um, very cheap craft brush brushes that you'll find in most um, stores and if you take obviously bearing in mind you won't be using this for anything else other than this if you take most of the bristles and pull them back with some masking tape you can then tape up most of the rest of the bristles to leave you just a small amount and here's one I've done earlier and that will then give you effectively a very small paintbrush the other thing it will do now if you can see here you've got very sort of um, uneven edges to this and this is going to be perfect for something that we do um, process for the last part of the painting of the toadstools so that's an alternative if you don't happen to have a small brush make your own out of one of the cheap craft store ones so if I bring it up so you can see what I'm doing I'm just dabbing in the paint just so it fits into those little hollows we made and don't have to worry with this one about taking the excess out with a wet wipe because there's not really that much in there but that just finishes off the inside, so I'm just going to do that with all five. Okay, so that's those all done. For this next part, you definitely need a wet wipe to hand, so I'm just going to grab one. And now we're going to start making our colours to um, decorate the top caps of the little toadstools. We're going to use five different colours in the end. The last colour is going to be the plain colour that we use which is at the bottom of the stem and then the four colours in between we're going to have a virtually white a very light blue for this one then we're going to have a slightly darker blue then a mixture of the blue and the pink to make a nice purple colour that we've got in the middle and then as I say the, um, the dark on the bottom so effectively we're replicating the colours in the shades of this so one two three four five and we're going to put those on the top now we're going to start not with the white we're going to start with a very light blue and we're going to take this big puffy brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip this straight into the light blue paint and because the brushes and the bristles are all splayed out what I should get is quite a nice loose covering on that um, top of that brush and starting with the largest one I'm going to cover three quarters of the way down just in a dabbing motion just go all the way around and you want to completely cover just in that dabbing motion three quarters of the way down the toadstool cap and repeat that for the other four okay those are those done don't bother cleaning your brush just put it to one side for a minute and the reason we do the dabbing motion is it gives much more texture than if you were trying to brush on the, the, um, the colour so with that brush 
still dirty from previous, I haven't cleaned this one either, we're going to make a dark, darker blue colour. So and exactly the same again, we're going to use this big puffy brush straight in to collect some more of the darker blue on our end of our brush. And this time we're going to do the bottom third, so from here up to about the third, so all the bit we haven't covered in. And I'm going to keep um, a wet wipe to hand because what happens quite often is you end up putting little bit dots of paint all over the stem as well. And if you want that, that's fine, leave it. But if you don't, have a wet wipe to hand and each time you put the colour on, just take the excess on, off. So exactly the same again. Just dabbing on. And I say the reason we dab, not just because it say, gives the texture, but it also splays those bristles out. So you get a nice sort of random effect at the top. So there you go, and just repeat again with the other four. Okay, so next one we want to do is we want to make more of the purpley colour. So I'm just going to add a little bit, take a bit of the pink and add that in. And same thing again. But this time we're just going to go just on the edge, just a bit up, so not as far up. So we still want that darker blue to show. And then just that little tapping motion, nothing more than that. Little tapping just on the edge. Okay, and now it is time to clean both of those brushes. So I've cleaned off the um, stems given myself a bit more of a cleaner space to work on. I'm just going to take some of the white. Now I've put out enough white here because I knew I was going to do both the colour combinations of the um, toadstools. Obviously you didn't need to put out quite so much if you're just doing your one colour. And then exactly the same again, I'm just going to take the, the fluffy brush which has now been washed and dried. And this time I'm just going to go over the top. So it's mainly working on the top but a randomly just going down occasionally across the other bits. And really I'm doing a dabbing motion. So you can see it gives that nice random fleckled look to the piece. And just repeat that for the other four. And our final bit is to do the dark colour, this one just round the edge of the toadstools. So this is where the little brush comes in, or as I say, if you don't have one, make yourself one because um, it'll give you a nice flared bit around the edge. So just taking a little bit of the um, pink paint, it's been slightly watered down but not a lot and I'm just dabbing the brush right on the edge. Look how weathered that one is as well with all the uh, when we did the inside gills and then having put it on you just go back and then you just drag it up slightly. Not too much just a little bit here and a little bit there. So dab on, go back round and drag up. And just keep doing that all the way round. And then when you've done that, I just take a bit of extra paint and I just go just all the way around, just dabbing on that underside lip so that when you look at it from the side, you don't get any of the unpainted clay showing at the side. It just gives it a nice finished feel and look. Okay, and there you go, finished toad store. So just repeat that with all the other ones. So there we have all of our pinky purpley ones done and now I'll just go back and do exactly the same for the black and yellow ones.
remember I said you could use a toothbrush, an old one, obviously, that no one else is using. So I'll just show you that. Show that it does work. There we go. And we also had the splayed out brush. So just to show that that will also work. So this is just a cheap craft store brush. So they all do work. And then last but not least, we're going to go back and do as we did before with some of the black slightly watered down but not a lot. And just to show you as well, let me put that one down just for a second, that cheap craft store one that I worked out and uh, did with the masking tape just to show you how that would look. Um, so same thing, dab on and then pull up. And if anything, this one works slightly better because of that really random way that those bristles have gone. So don't worry if you don't have any professional paintbrushes. As you can see, that looks pretty good just by using a bit of masking tape and taping up a really cheap superstore type paintbrush, the sort you find in any supermarket or kids craft type place. Okay, so there's that one done. There we go, 10 little toast stores all cleaned off and ready to go. Okay, so you've um, finished watching the video and hopefully that's inspired you to have a go and make some of these toast stores. So just to run through the tools that I used in the video, you saw me use a tissue blade, which is one of those. We used a craft knife in particular, we used the blunt end of the craft knife to make all the gills in the toad store. To do the little um, dotty points when we added the extra clay into the toad store, we used a blunt-ended knitting needle. Although if you haven't got one of those, then a cocktail stick would work just as well. To make the, the caps of the toad stores, we used our hands. But if you have them, you can also just use a ball tool. That's very handy. To make the holes in the top of the toad stores, we used a beading needle. Now, this is one... Um, it's mainly used for clay and comes with some of the tools you buy with clay and it's pointed at one end, nice sharp point, and the other end is blunt. But if we didn't have any of those, you could have just used the blunt end of the head pin and just wiggle it around a bit to um, make the hole. And of course we had the head pins to go inside the stems of the toadstools. You can buy those from most um, jewellery shops. They come under findings and they're used particularly for adding beads onto things. And if we're using the head pins and you don't have any that are straight, we use the flat nosed pliers to hold onto them to pull them straight. And then if you decided you didn't want to have the extra length on the end, we used a pair of the cutting pliers to take off any excess of the wire. The measuring sheet we used is one that I've just laminated and that's from www printablepaper.net. The other thing we used quite a lot of was the um, Kato poly paste and as I mentioned I particularly like this because it's gloopiness. If you haven't got any Kato poly paste then some of the really sticky tacky um, PVA glue would work just as well. So that's all the the tools side of it. So coming on to the painting side of it you will need a palette and you saw me use one in the video. However, if you don't have a palette, then um, jam jar lids or bottle tops, used ones you don't want anymore, will work just as well. These are the paints I used in the Technique. So there's a variety of makes there. You've got Pebio, Reeves, um, Castle Art Supplies. They just happen to be acrylic paints that I had at home. Whatever acrylic paints you've got, just use whatever ones you've got. Um, they should work absolutely fine. Paint brushes. I'll spend a little bit longer on the paint brushes I used. 
Paintbrushes are easy for me because as an artist I have a lot to hand. So these are just three of my own brushes that I pulled out. Um, this one's what I call a medium brush and we just use that for putting the wash in the inside gills of the toadstools and also to mix the paints. It's just an ordinary round-ended um, brush, actually size number four if anyone's interested. This one is the very small brush and you saw how we used as an alternative the cheap craft store version. And just to show you that again, it started out like that and then I taped up to such an extent that I ended up with just one very small little bit with nice random um, bits on the end. And I'd have to say, as you saw in the video, that probably actually worked better than this expensive um, proper artist brush. So go and get yourself some of the cheap craft brushes. And the last one we used was this one. Now, a lot of artists have brushes like this. It's where the paint's collected down the bottom end of all the bristles, so they splay out. A lot of artists actually chuck them away. So if you've got any friends who are artists, go and see if you can beg or borrow one from them. Um, if you haven't, then you can always make one yourself. Again, the two versions we had. This was exactly the same as the previous one there, just one of the little um, ordinary supermarket or craft store, very cheap child's brushes. And all I've been doing is literally pushing my finger in to make the bristles splay out so you can create your own version and if that didn't work and you haven't got either of those then of course the alternative we did use was an old toothbrush now please obviously make sure this isn't one that someone's using anymore um, but you can just use the particularly it was the end bit it tends to be a bit softer this bit and that's just the end I pushed in to the paint to create the speckled effect so that is your cheap alternative so there are the expensive artist brushes and these are your nice cheap alternatives. So don't worry too much about doing the painting on this. And last but not least, the clay I used. So I used translucent, this is Primo translucent clay. If you don't have any translucent, then one of the light colours in any brand of clay would work. Um, white, cream, one of the buff coloured pearls, they'll all be fine. And again, all of the brands of polymer clay will work well for this technique. And for the colours, I had very small amounts. This was probably about a one ounce, half, half a normal small block in any of the clay makes, about one ounce worth, um, about 28 grams. And these are just little small amounts. So this is the amount I used for the pink blue version, and these are the ones I used for the yellow black. And this happens to be Primo... Primo, Fimo, Fimo. Um, and there's about two grams of each of those. So again, not much in the way of clay. I think that's it for the um, end of the list of tools. I hope that was helpful. As I say, I put it at the end of the video because it was in slightly more detail and I didn't want you to all be hanging around waiting to get going on the actual technique. So I hope that makes sense and I hope you still enjoyed the video. Okay, so here we have some of the um, finished toadstools and here we have the little house I'm planning to put them in and I've just trimmed off the metal ends a little bit from here and then I'm just going to dip them in to the Kato poly paste and then because the base of my fairy house here is all still unbaked as yet I can literally just take my toadstools and press them in. And I'll carry on doing those, then I'll bake the house and I'll bring you back when it's done and show you how it looks. different colour schemes, lots of different ways you can do these um, to create your own little toadstools. I'd love to, as normal, see photos of anything you do or any of these that you've actually made. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you did, don't forget to um, tick like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye!